What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica. This is your Married to Medicine Review, episode 13. Um, come on, girl. You better be running on her toes. She looks like a gazelle out there, honey. Go. So what is everybody? Everybody had a good weekend. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. I hope that you relaxed. I hope you were able to get refreshed and re-energized, ready for the new week. And um, I hope everybody's doing well. If you have, if you don't know who I am, it, I'm Erica, and this is my little area where we talk about different things and discuss different things in the comments. You know, current events, social events, trending topics, reality shows, you know, what's going on, what you know, what the people are talking about, what you talking about, and um, we get down in the comments and we have a discussion, you're not going to tailgate me, sometimes I have a little road rage, it's, it's a little bit, but not a lot, I don't like tailgaters, you will soon find out, go ahead and like, subscribe and comment and let the diva know that you stopped by. A lot of people have been leaving comments that have been subscribed for a long time. And thank you. I appreciate your subscription. I, I appreciate you hitting the bell. And I thank you. So, let's talk about Married to Medicine. Anybody? Oh, let me tell you what I did this weekend. Really did nothing. Really did nothing. Um, you know, just, you know, errands and stuff like that. But I did watch the Clinton Affair. I have one more episode to go. It's on A&E. It's on demand on A&E. I have my fire. I'm on fire TV. So I, well, you know, I have it. So go watch. If you were around growing up during the time when Monica Lewinsky and Bill Clinton got caught for lying about, you know, Monica Lewinsky. It is really good. They got a lot of people to interview. I mean, almost everybody. Only person... I don't think I saw Linda Tripp's um, bird mouth ass, old snitching ass bitch. Oh, I would have, I would have beat that bitch down to the ground, baby. Bitch, I done confided in you. I said, let me tell you something. If I was a 23 year old White House intern, fucking the president of the United States or whatever the fuck I was doing, putting his dick in my mouth or whatever, bitch, wouldn't not nobody would know. No, when I tell you, nobody would know. Nobody would know. You can speculate, you can look around, and you can be like, I think she fucking the president, but bitch, you would never hear it. It would never, what, please? It would have never, Monica Lewinsky, but that's what happens. You be li little, young, you see an older woman, you feel like you can fight her, bitch, she was probably jealous. Like, what way I could, what way can we get back at these people? I, what, why would you say anything? I don't understand. It's none of my business. It's none of my business. It's none of my business. That is none of my damn business. Um, let me take my glasses off and put these on. Bitch, the sun is right here. Yes, it's risen this morning. The sun it has risen again, honey. All right. So let's talk about Married to Medicine. If you haven't watched it, go watch The Clinton Affair. It's really good, really insightful. A lot of people, everybody, they got everybody. They interview everybody. The Monica Lewinsky, her mom, everybody, her dad, everybody, all the reporters. Um, Jennifer, Fla what's her name? Jennifer Flowers, is that her name? Not the, is, what's the first one? What was the first one? It was three girls, Paula, some, some. I forgot her name that, just that fast. It's a lot of people. I was like, damn, I forgot about this news reporter and this news reporter and this press secretary and this White House attorney and all this other stuff. Okay, let me get my life together. I feel like I'm swerving. Okay. I feel like I'm... Okay. So we start off... This is episode 613. Or season 6, episode 13. We start off with Cecil and Simone. And Cecil's moving back into... the. And, um, and Simone are moving back underneath one house. Everybody's excited about that. And um, she, it, it, I, you know what? Cecil, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out his face is like so, he be looking so like innocent. Like he doesn't seem like the way that I think, I don't want to say that Simone be overreacting when she reacts to, to him because he be looking like, Dude, what the fuck did I do? Like, 
what did I do? Like, like so, he'd be looking so perplexed and confused. Well, I'm just thinking about when she confronts him next week about this bitch that didn't give a fuck about her marriage. I love Simone. I love this show. I love the way that it's produced. I love how they, at the beginning, they show little clips of what's going on in everybody's life, like the clip of um, Jackie in the doctor's office saying that she was 16 when her mother had another baby, and then the clip of a Contessa. Contessa got body. Did y'all see Contessa at that party with that blue dress? I said, come on, bitch. She got body, yaddy, yaddy. I said, come on, Contessa. You worried about these bartenders, bitch. They need to be worried about your ass. She was still standing in that door frame. I said, come on, bitch. Her waist is so little. And she was sitting on that couch. I was like, damn, Contessa. And her little titties was just sitting right up. She got, she did right. She didn't, she did right. She got the perfect size titties. Um, Cecil, moving back into the house. Okay, so there. They're happy about it. The son is happy about it. And it was cute when she said that he said he'll take the downstairs closet and you can keep the upstairs closet. That's how much I love you. I was like, okay, come on, Cecil. I like Cecil and Simone. I do. And I like that. I like that. Um, I like that Cecil. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out like what ha what's wrong? Like what is he doing? I need to know. I need some evidence. I need to see him. And maybe that's the thing like some people like she's upset and not happy was not happy in her marriage. <coughs> what was he doing? Cuz he like I can look at Curtis with his old hook nose and dry lips and look at him and tell he's up to no motherfucking arrogant ass good. I can look at him and tell. I don't even like looking. Every time Curtis come on the TV, I get up and walk away. I don't want to see him. I feel like I'm Jackie's friend. I don't want to see him. I don't want any jokes. I don't even like the way he looked when he walked into the room and saw those bartenders. His face, he was too excited. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't want to see it. I don't want nothing to do with Curtis. I, I can't. But Cecil, I'm like, Cecil, what are you doing to Simone? What is going on? Is Simone overreacting? And that's how things go on in marriages. And you're like looking from the outside like, bitch, what the fuck did he do to you? Like, he seemed so nice and down to earth. He was at in, in an antique with um, cooking and everything. He just said, and he, make, he makes jokes. He has like a dry sense of humor. And him and um, Simone have great, when I tell you they got great timing when they're in their interviews going back and forth. I love it. Damon has some jokes this this um, episode. I was like, okay, fellas. This was overall, I really enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed this episode. I laughed a lot. Um, and I was just thinking how well produced this is. And then I was looking at um, some other show and I was like, this don't have nothing to do. This is like totally separate from Real Housewives. And somebody online was saying Real Housewives is real tired. And then word on the street is the producers are just like, mm, I don't know. We're not getting, you know, maybe it was a mistake. Letting Kenya go. Yeah, y'all let Kenya go when after all these damn years of her trying to find a man, wanting to have a baby, and here she is, that her fucking vision realized, and y'all missing it. That's what y'all get. That's what Bravo gets. That's what Bravo gets. Anyway, so they're happy they're moving back together. Anyways, you know, I'm all over the place. I did enjoy the episode. Quad and Heavenly. Heavenly comes over Quad's house. They're just sitting around talking. Um, Heavenly's energy was real good this episode. In every little scene she was in, she brought a lot of, like, vibrant, like, you know, real, like, energy. And her and Quad were sitting there talking, and she was like, you know, Quad was saying how she just realizes who her friends are and how she didn't you know like she they showed a clip of Simone showed a clip of Toya just like you know saying she really thought you know just showing you know just showing how they are not being as sensitive to her situation as she would like or would hoped they would be and Heavenly has really pushed through she has really come through that's a Scorpio she's gonna be once they latch on you got to you have to be the one to be like get away from me because once they own you they it's just they own you so they're sitting down talking i really like that I, I i i don't know if quad is leaving the show she's, she's i mean i don't know what that's gonna look like maybe she's not gonna be on as much maybe she's gonna be a friend to the show now like just you know um 
but we'll see. So they're sitting around and she was like, you know, I just didn't know who would be my friend and I really appreciate you and this bracelet really, I, I wear this bracelet and I'm so glad. And, and, and Heavenly was like, I was shocked that you, no one else did it. And I was too. I was really shocked that Eugene and Toya didn't think of it. Eugene and Toya saved a lot of money on that trip because if you notice Cecil and Simone was talking about how they had to do they had to do their own food they had to um, wash their own clothes they so they weren't at a resort even the son was like was y'all at a resort resort Cecil was like nah we wasn't at no goddamn resort but yeah so um I, I was surprised that Toya didn't give quad a gift not really she's tacky I don't even I'm not surprised let me shut up that, that was a lie I was not surprised um Curtis and Jackie Ugh. So they going over to um, Jackie's house to help her cook because you know she don't cook. I don't have any. I don't have anything wrong with that. That is a motherfucking doctor on call, delivering babies and saving lives. If she don't cook, she don't cook. That's just it. If she order out, she got the means to do it. Do it. I believe that um, Jackie has an eating disorder. I'm just gonna say it. I looked at her plate. She made that big old plate when they went to Simone's house, but that plate, when her and Curtis were sitting down eating, she looked like she had a, one piece of asparagus and maybe a, 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 a quarter of a chicken breast. Like, it was really sad to see. And I was like, she has an eating disorder. She's always talking about a diet. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm always here for being healthy and stuff like that, but that is a theme with um jackie is this diet thing even um i think it was was it scott or aiden somebody said something about oh are you on your diet or eugene somebody said something to her about her diet and i was like mm, i don't know um so they cooking for curtis and the 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 um psychologist said the counselor said treat your man like a king i don't agree with it i think that he should be treating her like a queen he should be showing her appreciation but that's that's his reason for stepping out so i guess she she didn't have much enough time for him so the counselor is like okay well y'all need to make time for each other and this is the way treating him like a king i don't know about all that whatever so heavenly comes over simone comes over heavenly comes in so cute like her energy was like what's up y'all like here i am like that fun energy i can see that's heavenly and she said, I make my man. She was like, yes, I make everything I cook. I, he eats steak and he eats coochie. I said, come on, Scorpio, bitch. <laughs> I love, she is my favorite. I don't care what y'all say. Y'all can say she's a mean, evil monster. Little Heavenly, the mean, evil monster. She was cute to me. They helped her cook chicken breasts and salmon look like. Um, what else did they have? Asparagus and mashed potatoes. And, and rolls um, the the dinner itself as she plated it it wasn't appealing to me it didn't look appetizing to me he probably was lying about it being at, at least if she didn't know how to turn on the oven that shit was hilarious and, and if Simone was like even Simone was like I even know how to turn the goddamn I know how to turn the oven on she it was but I'm not <coughs> she don't use it so what she how she gonna know, know to turn it on let me get over here. I like to, I like to look y'all in the face when I'm talking to you, or to the side, wherever I'm looking. All right. So Toya and Eugene, I really thought that the way that they made the clip show that Toya and Eugene was gonna have a little tiff about this house, but it turns out that it's just, um, it's just that they have to make her closet smaller, and she doesn't want to. So they're gonna compromise with the wine cellar. And um, that's, you know, those are the things when it comes to building a house. Uh, she was like, I need my two, two, two floor, two story closet. You really don't, but you do if you want it. That's, that's, that's why you build your own shit. So you can build what the fuck you want. Okay. Cecil and Jackie. Jackie's in a bodysuit looking a mess. <laughs> I was like, dude, she got, she was getting all ready and stuff like that. And when she was getting ready, putting her shoes on and everything. And I was like, she put on, she did all that to put some stockings on, but it was a bodysuit. <laughs> she had her bodysuit on and she was cooking her dinner and he came in. He was like, I hear some pots going. 
And he sat down and ate, and then he was like, I'm walking upstairs, I'm talking about I'm following the cheeks. You, those was, I don't know what she was following. Those was not cheeks. <laughs> those was not cheeks. Those was planks. <laughs> no. I don't know. I, I imagine Jackie, they said Jackie is a freak. She's Prudence Hollowell. She's so prude to me. I don't, I don't, I don't, nothing from her exudes sex at all. It don't even exude erotic. Like, none of that. It doesn't, none of it. None of it, honey. Uh, I'm trying to see this. I'm trying to work around this, um, this, oh, okay. Damn it. I was trying to work around this, um, this bus. Let me see. trying to work around this bus okay all right i was trying to get in this other lane let me get over here because y'all really acting a fool let me get over here there we go all right so heavenly she goes to dr anger management his i just i don't know that house these different people opening the doors who is this man where's his website who is this man with this hair this this hair at the top and is he a pastor is he a spirit what is he he's anger management i don't understand i don't understand this man but he's sitting there and she tells him what happened in antigua and he's explaining um doing some kind of like deep breathing exercises with her and she's crying and you know saying that her thing her issue is with um, mariah that she lies on her and her sister used to lie on her and she reminds her a lot her sister just don't get along they're like oil and water we just don't get along and Mariah reminds me of my sister. But see, I don't like the way that they're framing it as if Heavenly's aggravation or antagonism towards Mariah is unwarranted. Do you understand? Like, I can see if Heavenly was being mean to Mariah and Mariah was n as nice as whoever else to her like she's not nice and she lies and a lot of the times heavenly they're reactionary both of her both of them react to each other whatever somebody says it's an eye roll it's some shade it's real quick and then mariah does a lot of shit that we don't see offline on her lives everything and it's not like the energy towards Mariah is unwarranted. You understand what I'm saying? It's it's warranted. <clears throat> she said she lied. She lies. She's always lying on me. And my sister used to always lie on me. I and you know she's crying and everything. And I don't know. Here she goes again, apologizing to Mariah. Like she wants to have a sit down with Mariah and apologize to her. I'm trying to get this sun out of my face. And um, I, I just don't agree with it. I am tired of Heavenly sitting down with Mariah. I'm tired of it. I don't, I'm tired of it. I don't want to see it no more because it's all, it's never Mariah. I think that Mariah has Mariah. I feel like one time Mariah tried to sit down and talk to Heavenly, but I feel like it's Heavenly mostly initiating these sit downs and I don't agree with it. I just don't because I don't think it's unwarranted. I think Mariah, whatever Heavenly gives to her, it maybe it's a two. Maybe it might. It might be Heavenly doesn't like reacting like that. But I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't. I don't. I don't agree with it. I'm tired of her sitting down with Heavenly. A Heavenly sitting down with Mariah. Anyway, so we get to the Mikasa Sukasa party. Everybody's coming in and they basically announce it. Everybody looks nice. They give a toast to family because they make an announcement that they're moving back in together. Everybody is happy. People are crying. Eugene's crying. Heavenly's crying. And Heavenly's like, you know, we look to y'all. Y'all been, have they been married the longest out of everybody? 20 something years. And we look to y'all and we don't want y'all to break up because, you know, you know, um, it would be like there's no hope. Damon was happy. He was so happy. You know, Damon is, he loves love. I wonder what sign Damon is. I really wonder what, I don't know what sign he is. 
Um, so they so they're making their plates. Everybody's making their plates. They have moles, um, little Mexican food spot or whatever. And the guys are like, yeah, we're about to go downstairs. I got the room set up and everything. It's all good. They were like, okay. So they having drinks and taking shots. They're having a good time. I really loved watching that scene with those couples in there just fellowshipping and drinking and having a good time there was a, a little bit of conflict but not that much and I'm here for it no conflict between Heavenly and Mariah no conflict between Quad and Mariah no conflict between Toya and Contessa I think Contessa gate came in and gave Toya a hug Contessa that blue and then that waist bitch I'm about to lose my voice again she looked perfect I said come through bitch her and Scott was matching he had on his blue shorts I love Scott's personality I love his energy that he brings to the group I love it I love that they're all professional every single person is a professional but they have their conflict so you're not above the conflict as your commas increase in your bank account as the letters increase at the end of your name none of that stops and I love the fact that they're showing that and then they're showing them come together and fellowship and everybody's getting along I appreciated that I was here for it I was like okay this is what the fuck I'm talking about everybody's having a good time they're sitting down and um, they go downstairs and then the women there's some bartenders downstairs and that shit was so funny like I said I did not like Curtis the way he was smiling as he walked through the door I did not appreciate that I don't know, nothing he do I'm looking at even there was one part in the interview Jackie was saying something to him and she was giving him a mean ass look and and it was something that he said about Greg and Quad and um she was like whatever whatever happened he deserved what he got or some shit she said and she was looking mad like don't be sticking up for him y'all niggas is in the same fucking boat don't be sticking up for him ain't it gonna tell that's what that shit was so funny because didn't didn't everybody say mariah be putting aiden up to shit when they said that aiden gonna call mariah you probably texted mariah now upstairs to tell her that these bartenders is down here and damon he said his big ass right at the bar said it right he said his ass he know his wife is the most jealous he gonna come down here that shit was so funny they're making drinks and everything and having a good time they said that they miss um what's his name gregory they wish that he gregory was there and that it seems like they chose quad over gregory well quad i don't know that they choose quad over gregory y'all can still hang out with gregory did they're just divorced they just did nobody tell anybody to pick and choose but how do you think that you know because i'm watching real housewives of atlanta and watching vicky gumbelson hook her her friend's ex-husband up with somebody how would you how do you think that quad would be mad if mariah how, what do you think if mariah hooked greg up with somebody and went on a double date with him and aiden and his new girlfriend how do you think quad would react to that like honestly like that shit is crazy you just don't do stuff like that that just made me think of like how in like the black women if that happened amongst them what how would that have gone down you understand what i'm saying anyway <clears throat> anyway so damon sent his fat ass at the bar that shit was so funny to me and they come down there and then uh a, a, a heavenly come through the door talking about who these hoes where do you, they got hoes down here <laughs> What you doing? She said, we're just serving them. They did, Heavenly, they did, they did not say that was a lie. Heavenly lie. They did not, the girl did not say I'm serving your man. Maybe she said it and didn't, and they didn't show it. But we didn't see that part. So Damon is sitting up there and it was so funny in the interview. Da she was like, you was down there with them girls and you was just sitting down there. And he said, I didn't notice them until you pointed them out, bitch. I said, come on, Damon. And he did not break the joke i said yes damon you better tell that joke and not break character i love it i said yes i love them i love cecil simone heavenly damon scott and contessa those are those are the three toya and with toya and eugene i'll take eugene over toya and with jackie and curtis i i leave them both where they at where they arrogant elitist asses are i leave them right there i believe that 
Um, Curtis, I believe that Jackie has an eating disorder. I'm just gonna say that. Like it's something, it's something is not right. And <coughs> even she made a big ass plate. Somebody's like, you're not on your diet. She was like, no, not today. I, she probably didn't eat that food. She didn't eat that food. So the lady, the men are downstairs. The ladies are upstairs, and they're talking about um, couples trips. And Toya, ooh, Toya is a tacky bitch. And she said couples trips should be only for couples. Should be no single people on the couples trips. Okay, I agree. I agree with Toya. I agree. I mean, I don't see Quad knows everybody so well, so it's not that bad. I could see if Quad asked to bring a, a man that they didn't know, it probably would be hard for them to share because they don't know this man. They know Greg. So it would it would be easier if Greg was there to feel like this is a couple's trip. She can bring another man and Quad is like, honey, guaranteed I'm not going to be single for long. And I know she's not. Quad is pretty. Quad is a pretty girl. She's smart. She She's vivacious. She got a lot of great energy. I mean, you know, all them voices, but we, we can work with that. But at the end of the day, I don't believe Quad is going to be single for long. I just, I just don't. I just don't. And I agree with her. I was like, I agree with you, girl. You ain't going to be. But I don't. Toya, that shit was tacky as fuck. And just like Quad said, you want you now you're wondering why I wasn't coming around. I wasn't coming around. Now I'm coming around. Now you want to push me away and say I need a man to be around y'all. That's not cool, Toya. Toya is a bitch. It's something like a baby bitch. A baby bitch. You a baby, you a toddler, but you a bitch and an asshole at the same time. Like, that shit is tired. I, I, I just didn't... I mean, I agree with her, but I don't like how... I just don't like... I just didn't like that. I just think she's just so insensitive and just... No, she doesn't have any class. She doesn't have any class. She just doesn't. It's like, why would you say that to her? And... And we having a good time here. Like, I don't know. I just was like, Toya, you're so fucking childish and fucking whack. And <coughs> Okay. So Toya's whack. Toya I, I agree with Toya, but I just don't like her approach. I just don't appreciate her approach at all. Not at all. Um so they go play golf. They say they miss Greg. They go to Top Golf. They're playing golf. Greg shows up, and they're talking to him and asking him how everything is going. Damon said, "I'm I'm optimistic. I believe in love. You know, do you see a chance of y'all getting back together?" And he's like, "No, I didn't realize how short Gregory was. Greg is really short. He's shorter than Damon, and Damon's short. Um, I didn't. I." I, I the way that he was looking at Damon, like, nigga, no. It's not, we're not coming back from that. I feel like he's okay. Like, acting like you're so hurt. And then you're not really hurt. You more mad about her taking the bed. <coughs> it was funny how they reacted to it. But it just shows where he is. He didn't say anything like, that's my, you know, I love her and this and that. If she's going to be happy, wherever she's doing, going away, then that's what she's going to do. She's going to be happy. That's what she needs to do to be happy. Quad, honey. I'm not mad at Quad. I'm not mad at her at all. Let me block. I can't. My hand can't block the sun. I'm not mad at it. I'm proud of her. I'm glad she went through. I'm glad she's going through the divorce. I know she might be sad. It's a, you know, divorce. They said divorce is like a death. All that little bullshit. But I'm, you know, next week we're going to see that, um, um, oh, she left the divorce papers in the mailbox. Here's the thing I have about that. That's that, I'm glad I, I I'm glad I didn't end this. When you betray somebody, and there's no reason. When you betray somebody, there is no reason for you to believe that they owe you any respect. Do you understand me? 
They don't owe you a motherfucking thing. They don't owe you shit. They don't owe you manners. They don't owe you politeness. They don't owe you a motherfucking thing. Do you understand me? For so for you to believe like, oh my God, I can't believe she left the divorce papers in the in the damn mailbox. Like I said, you lucky she didn't put the divorce papers on a flaming motherfucking arrow and had a Sentinelese tribe member shoot that motherfucker through your living room window. I don't understand how you motherfuckers believe that you can violate and betray somebody and they owe you any level of respect. That's out the window, my nigga. Out the window. It's out. It's out the window. They don't owe you nothing. I, I was like, okay, so what? She put him in the mailbox. She don't want to confront you. And I and I thought that people had to be served. Do you have to be served for a divorce? I guess when the person is avoiding the divorce, right? They don't want to be served. Anyways, that's my time, y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day. I hope that you have a great and a positive and productive week. And leave everything in the comments. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Um, have a wonderful day. Take care of each other. Peace.